Well, hey guys. Uh, obviously, I'm not there for class tonight. And surprise, I didn't know that was going to happen, but I've got your lesson ready for tonight and I'm going to share it to you. And you guys can watch and then you can do your activities or um, games or your Bible tools or your creation station and, and your snack. I know that all the teachers there will take good care of you. I am taking care of my mom today because she has been in the hospital. And we're going home here in just a few minutes. So I'm sitting in the car recording you guys a lesson. And then you guys will watch it tonight. And we'll get back together hopefully next week and wrap up what we've been talking about. So with that in mind, I want to show you a quick review of all the stuff that we've been doing. And we're going to tie it in to today's lesson. Today's lesson is sharing the gospel through the church. And if you remember... What we've been working on for the last several weeks is what is the church? And hopefully you're tired of me asking you that question because you already know that it's not a building. It is the people, the people who follow Jesus, the people who love Jesus and have put their faith in him. And the Bible calls us over and over uh, living, living stones. And so when he calls us a living stone, we are part of his family and he builds the church around us and so the lessons that we've learned so far is that God's people gather together in order to do three things and one of those three things is worship God and we spend a lot of time talking about that and then we kind of have moved into love one another last week and then we're going to talk about love one another and the gospel the la this week and next week so let's see how many things we can make sure we understand about why we gather together. Why do we meet together as a church? Uh, wherever it happens to be, it could be outside, anywhere. Our purposes are to gather together. Number one, to worship. We spent several different lessons talking about singing and praying. That We do that when we're together. That we preach and, and read God's word. We study. That people who become followers of Christ are baptized as a picture, as a symbol of how they are following Christ. And we also take the Lord's Supper or communion as a symbol to help us remember what God um, gave us when Jesus died on the cross. And then last week we tied <coughs> give, uh, when we talked about giving our money, but we also talked about giving our time and our talents to serve and help one another, which is part of loving one another. So the job of the church, the people who are already followers of Jesus, is to encourage each other, to serve each other, to watch over each other. Somebody needs help. I like the teachers are doing for me tonight because I need help to, to take care of my mom. They're taking care of you. Um, then we teach this one more time. I think we keep having a little glitchiness. So when we, when we love one another, we teach, we submit, we live in harmony we try to get along and we welcome other people into our homes. One of the ways we do that is through serving, which we talked about last week. So let's look at some ways that maybe we could serve. We didn't get to look at these. But preaching and teaching are things we're used to thinking about people doing at the church. But helping out in the kitchen or cleaning up uh, from snacks, cleaning bathrooms or sweeping up when there's a mess, um, singing in the choir helps with the worship time, helping uh, hand out the communion cups that we've been using, uh, maybe helping to make copies or playing instruments, going and visiting each other, people who've been sick, people who are at the hospital, uh, welcoming people when they come in, helping people find their way to show them where their nursery is and classes. These are things that everybody who is a part of the family can do together as a living stone in the church to show love for one another. But the third thing <clears throat> is found uh, in the sharing the gospel uh, to others. So let's talk about what, where does that come from? Why do we share the gospel? And this is a scripture passage in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. It says, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. <clears throat> this is a command that God gave to the people who were the first living stones, the ones that we studied back at the beginning when the church first started. 
he said to them, if you want to grow the church, if you want to have success, it's not about building a building. It's about bringing new living stones into the family, more people to know him. So that's making disciples and not just making disciples in your home, even though that's super important. We want to share it to our family members, to our cousins, to our brothers and sisters, to someday your children, <clears throat> our neighbors, but also it says all nations. So we're going to talk about how do we grow the church? How do we share the gospel so that there are new living stones to continue building up this church that started way back when Jesus went to heaven? So we're going to proclaim the gospel to the lost. We're going to use a gem. You might have noticed that big diamond there. It is a, a, an acrostic to help us learn what are the things for that to remember how we share the gospel. What do we do? So there's three ways that we can specifically think about sharing the gospel. And the first one has to do with this verse right here. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now, when that says let your light shine, does that mean that you're going to put sparkly lights all over your clothes? Does that mean you're going to turn the flashlight app on your phone and wave it around in the air? <laughs> or carry candles around with you? No, what kind of light are we talking about? You giving some good answers here? Light shines in the darkness. Light causes us to be able to see things that are important. If there's no light, we can't see what's going on. So when we want people to see that God is awesome and that he loves them and that he died for them and wants to make them a part of his church, they need a light to see what that's about. So when it says, let your light shine, what is it that he wants them to see? Look right there in the middle of that verse. He wants them to see our good works. And then what do with those good works? Give glory to God for them. So when our light shines, it shines so that we can help other people see how much God loves them. How do they see? Because we act differently. We do good things that other people wouldn't do because God has, has loved us and has saved us. So the G stands for good works. Now, let's think about what some of those good works might be. Maybe uh, it's visiting your neighbors. Maybe it's raking the lawn for them when their leaves are down and they can't do it for themselves. Maybe it's bringing those birthday boxes that we have collected for Maybe it's putting your money in your offering box that we've got at home right now for the Ukrainian refugees. And by the way, do not forget that we're bringing those back this coming Sunday when we have our Bring Our Family to Sunday School time at 9 a.m. We're having breakfast and everything. So you're doing a good work even as you're coming to participate in another part of the church by worship and teaching. So all of these parts overlap. I don't want you to think that we do things and then, oh, no, we don't do that right now because we're sharing the gospel. When we're sharing the gospel, we're also teaching and helping other people and loving each other. When we give our money, these people who receive it, who receive the help from Christian people in, in the Ukraine are going to be like, why do those people even care? And that gives us an opportunity to share and shine a light on these good works. So first thing we want to do is shine work shine a light. But then Jesus said this verse in Mark 5, 19, he said, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So he says, when you do good things or when other people see that good has been done to you, don't just say, oh, that was lucky. Oh, wasn't that nice? No, we have to tell them what the Lord has done for us. So it's not just enough to do the G, to do good works. After people see the good works and go, what is that from? Then we turn and we tell them where it comes from. And we're very specific with them about what God has done. So that's E, evangelism. And evangelism is telling our story. Telling what God has done to show mercy to us. Telling what God has done to save them. The story of Easter is coming up. That is the gospel. We are sinners. We do not deserve God's love and forgiveness. 
We deserve the punishment that comes for sin, which is death and separation from God forever in hell. But God made a way by sending Jesus to save us. Jesus didn't owe for any kind of consequence for sin because he never sinned. And because he never sinned, but was willing to die for us in our place, he can take our punishment away. This is huge news. This is good news. Lots of people in the world don't believe it. Lots of other people in the world don't know it. So when we show them our good works, then they're curious. And we have an opportunity to share with them, evangelize, tell them the specific details of what the Bible says, such as Romans 10, 17. Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. If they don't hear what God's done for them, then they will not have the opportunity to understand and put their faith in Jesus. But when we are ready, like 1 Peter 3.15 says, in our hearts to honor Christ as holy, we're prepared to make a defense to anybody who asks you for the reason of the hope that's in you. We do that with gentleness and respect. We're ready to talk to someone to share with them the, the good news of the gospel. We're there to, to help them understand in kindness that they're sinners. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We have all chosen to do things that we want to do, not what God wants us to do. And there is the consequence. But Jesus loves us enough. And when we can hear this gospel, then all of a sudden those people will come to faith in Christ and they become part of the church. They are another living stone to build up that wall, to make the church grow. And then they take on the same things. They love one another. They worship. They sing. They give. They serve. They pray. They study the Bible. And soon the church is growing even more. So we want to be part of all of these things. There's one letter left after J, after G for good works and E for evangelism. And that is M. And that's where we're going to pick up our lesson next week. Because we want to talk about it's not just what we do to our neighbors and to our families to share the gospel. But the Great Commission, that verse we read in Matthew 28 at the beginning, says that we are also to share it to the whole world. So we're going to talk next week. How is the church not just here in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, not in the United States, but how is the church all over the world? And how is God growing the church through? Mm, mm, okay, I'll keep the M to myself. Be sure you get all your activities done today and cooperate. And thank you guys for being part of the church tonight. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for the gospel. Thank you that it is what saves us and turns us into living stones so we become part of the church. Help us to learn it. Help us to have our faith in it so then we can turn and share it to others by doing good works and then teaching them from the scriptures where those good works come from, that all the glory and honor would be given to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, you guys. I really appreciate you listening tonight, and I will see you next week.